Well, first, thank you to all the witnesses for your important testimony, uh, especially Mr. Sward for your courage for being here and, and sharing. Um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's such a difficult issue for everybody here trying to find solutions, and I want to thank you for, for sharing so we can talk about them. Um, Dr. Conroy, we, we heard from you know Mr. Sward about uh, the fact that his daughter was able to access the Internet, and in minutes she could get fentanyl, cocaine, meth, uh, hydromorphone, or marijuana. It was just a click away. You also highlighted that in your, your speech about the impact of the internet, and you mentioned the need to improve uh, online safety for youth. Can you answer maybe a couple of questions that you could share your thoughts on? What role is social media playing in the youth mental health crisis? And do you have specific recommendations on how we can make the internet safer for youth? Thank you for this question. Um, I, I have conducted quite a bit of research on the topic. And the work that I have done has demonstrated that social media, more than other forms of media, is contributing to uh, young people's poor mental health. Um, and um, the work that we have published um, is also was you know was attributed to having inspired some of the work that was done uh, by Meta. Um, on young people, on the impact of their products on mental health. So um, there is Canadian research that is informing changing policies in other countries right now around online safety for young people. Um, I really like some of the solutions that have been proposed and passed in the UK and in Europe. And there's even a report um, that I could make available to everyone on some changes that have that industry has had to implement in relation to some new regulatory policies in Europe. And they do result in safer practices for young people on uh, social media platforms. So what I can say is that um, the more a young person uses social media, the more they are likely to experience depression, anxiety symptoms, the more they learn that underage drinking is normal and the more they're influenced to drink at an earlier age. And we also find the same effect for cannabis. Um, we also have shown that um, using social media impacts your cognitive development and makes a young person more disinhibited and impulsive and it contributes to ADHD symptoms. And we know that all three of those behavioral profiles and symptom profiles place a young person at much higher risk for early onset substance muse, misuse. Um, and so social media is directly and indirectly increasing young people's risk for addiction in my opinion. And it's through access to substances, but it's also through impacting on young people's cognitive development and, and the development of self-control, as well as influencing their attitudes about substance use. So there are three separate effects. What kind of solutions for, for Canada with respect to online safety for young people hold industry responsible for the harms and we're not doing that in Canada to my understanding. Um, I, I don't think we should only be focusing on hate speech. There's other harmful effects of social media on young people and there are solutions to, to this. And, um, so the idea is, I don't know how much time I have, but making sure that products are safer for young people and we can talk about this perhaps at another time, but, but holding industry responsible for making their products safer for young people, recognizing that young people are using their products. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Conrad. I'm, we could ask you questions all day, I'm sure. You've, it's so important, youth uh, uh, prevention. is We just don't talk enough about prevention. And so look forward to you sending that, that information to us.